morning, happy vlog, happy Friday. I just dropped off Mateo at school. Danielle goes in a little earlier, so usually we have a little hangout time. But I took, yes, I dropped my child off at school like that. What, you don't, you're not part of the uh, pajama club in the carpool lane? So he lives, he lives. <laughs> My son lives, we live close enough to his school where he can walk, so he takes his bike usually, and it's like a struggle because I swear that kid will live with me until I die, which is good, I'm not complaining, but I'm trying to like make him a little more autonomous and independent, so he's been riding his bike. But I had a couple of Etsy orders to get sent off because I'm in pajamas. He hops out of the car and puts them in the mailbox for me. Anyway, I don't know why I'm getting that deep into my morning. It is going to be a fun weekend. So I'm going out with my friend Debbie today, like in the afternoon, like adult. And tomorrow we have date night, like official date night, like super cute date night, like reservations date night at one of our favorite restaurants. I think it's to celebrate Parker's birthday, although he's acting like it's not. So we're gonna make it a little extra special. And then I think that's it. Like aside from, you know, it's one of the first and only and few weekends in fall where we're not gonna have a baseball tournament. So I'm excited about that. So I told you guys in a previous vlog, I don't remember if it was a vlog or two ago, that because of my very late in life ADHD diagnosis, I was given a stimulant medication. And after trying like 10 different doses, I just, I raw dog it, you guys. And apparently if you are neurodivergent, when you start to have perimenopause symptoms, they're like significantly worse. So I saw my psychiatrist yesterday and she's like, you know what? Your doctor is absolutely right. So my doctor slash nurse practitioner, the person that told me that um, my symptoms were most likely related to untreated ADHD. I don't think ADHD needs to be treated. You know what I mean? Like so many of us are diagnosed or not diagnosed until later in life. But so many of us are neurodivergent. I feel like it's kind of like a 50-50 split. It doesn't seem to me like it's something that should be pocketed. You know, like these people are stricken by the illness of the ADHD. You know, it just, anyway, I could talk about that for hours. But so according to my doctor, untreated ADHD can cause the symptoms that I have been feeling. And she's like, and since stimulant medication makes you feel yuck, let's go a completely different route. I also have been thinking about nootropics. No nootropics, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Have any of you tried that? Do you have any experience with that? It's basically non-prescription supplement combinations that help with focus and motivation and you know energy and mood and stuff like that so i'm hoping that maybe one of you guys has tried it and you can let us know what you think about it what your thoughts are but today we have something very important going on i have to paint my nails yeah yeah I gotta paint my nails i'm gonna put you here while i do this if i get chopped off sorry but look at you see that growth? Finally, a couple of my nails chipped because I was doing some stuff outside. But the base coat, all about that base from Ella and Mila is just phenomenal, you guys. It's so awesome. Can't recommend it enough. I mean, I'll obviously recommend the top coat way more, the Glisten and Glow top coat. I've been around since it was the, of course I forgot. When I'm about to brag about how I can remember something, I think it was, Shoot, what was the name of the top coat? Tokyo Girl or something like that? It had a cute, oh man, now I'm mad at myself. So last vlog, I told you guys that I made a little manicure kit for my friend Connie. And I was like, well, I might as well show you guys how I do it. Not super in depth, because I'm sure that video would be so long because your girl loves to talk. What were we talking about? So we went from talking, <laughs> clearly the non-stimulant route isn't, performing very well right now. So yeah, if you guys have tried nootropics, you have to let me know. I am trying a new medication, see how I like it. It is a non-stimulant, so fingers crossed with that. But you kind of, it's one of those things where you don't have results immediately. But if my symptoms, symptoms, if my symptoms are exacerbated because 
of my ADHD. They still have to stem from something, right? It can't just be all of a sudden you're older so your symptoms suck. I don't know. That's what my gut tells me. But I could be wrong. I posted a vlog this morning and a lot of you guys are saying like, no, you need to get a second or third opinion or you need to go to a functional medicine doctor or you need to go to a menopause specialist. And all of those sound like great ideas and I think I'm actually going to try them because it's true. I mean, just pulling blood work. What if I'm not around my period time? Or what if I am around my period time? Wouldn't my blood work all look differently throughout different parts of the year? I would, I would think. I got up early today because I forgot to do the links for my vlog, so I was doing that. And then I had an order for, look at this. Oh my goodness. How cute is that? A little Hello Kitty, pink and purple. Mm-hmm. Super cute. Okay, I don't know if I should do my nails right now. I don't have the energy to do my nails because I like to be really like specific, really concise and precise. But I think it's just one of those things where like if I don't do it, I'm just not gonna do it. I have to do my toenails too. I'm gonna take a break. I'll do my toenails and then I'll come back and we can do our hands together. And for hands, I gotta get my gear. sound do you guys hear that it's like a spaceship okay so I need these for my toes look at how disastrous these are like these have I think this is probably why I haven't gotten rid of them these have chew marks from when the double was a puppy that is really loud I hope you guys can hear it otherwise I sound completely insane right now yeah look at that little bite marks from when the double was a puppy. So like, obviously I can't get rid of these. They're special. So these are for my toes. This is my buffer. It's my favorite buffer ever. And I've tried to buy different buffers. I have this one too. This is a good one. I got this in my advent calendar. Tips on how to soften a buffer. Like make it less buffy, you know what I mean? Because my nails are really thin and I can't go like super ham sandwich on them. But like this is my favorite buffer ever. Got to get my nail clipper. Look at that. Got a little, my little tweezerman nail clipper, and then my tweezerman nail file. I'll also take out this to clean the edges in case I have a spill. I rarely ever have like overflow or like smudging because I really like to take my time. It's like very relaxing for me. And then I'm gonna get my base coat and my top coat. I have these generic bottles because I buy the Glisten and Glow refill. I don't know why I have two separate ones. I buy the Glisten and Glow refill and I put it in just this plain bottle that I got on Amazon. And then I have my cuticle oil. Here, look, I have my backup ready to go. <laughs> oh, speaking of Glisten and Glow, let me show you guys this actually. So I placed an order for Connie's Top coat. It's these little things that tell me immediately whether or not a focus medication is working for me or not is how distracted I get by external factors that I have no control over. It's like right now all I can hear is the washer that big truck loud sound, the landscapers over here doing my neighbor's house. And it like makes me buffer my train of thought. Anyway, look at how sweet she was. So I ordered the kit for the top coat that has the top coat and a refill to restock. Cause clearly I didn't know I still had those three vials left. So she has different options where you can just buy the bottle itself. You can buy two bottles. You can buy a bottle and a refill, which is what I got. This is the smaller size. She has one size higher from this with like more in the, the little spout or the spigot. And then she sent all of this. <laughs> I think there are two collections. Oh, here's a top coat. So the top coat comes like this. If you buy the top coat directly from her, not the refill, you don't have to buy like the extra bottles or whatever. It already comes like this. And her brushes are really nice. So she sent that and she also sent ridge filler. I've never used a ridge, ridge filler. I don't think my nails, you see, I mean, they're pretty jacked right now, but there's no 
texture to my nails. It's the one place I don't have texture, like my thighs. This is the Ridge Filler. It might be cool to experiment with it, see if it makes my manicure look any different. But I think what she did was send me her fall collection. I don't know what it's called though, because the, they have like state names. And the Zodiac collection. So like these, let me turn them so you can see the colors. These are the uh, states. Like the, the pine tree state, the constitution state, the ocean state. Look at how pretty those colors are. It reminds me of the Kerry Washington collection from OPI a few years ago. I bought every single color in that collection. I was in love with that collection. The berries and like the camo greens, like the olive tones. It looks exactly like this collection. So beautiful, so elegant. And then she has the Zodiac collection. And these all have like sort of like a sparkle in them. And then the color is based on your zodiac. So like, you see the names at the top and then the colors. So for example, this is Capricorn. Then we have Gemini. Cancer is like a raspberry. Taurus is green. Pisces and Scorpio. I don't know where the basis of the colors was drawn from or like the inspiration, but Scorpio is definitely black, like their heart. Uh, <laughs> Libra and Aries. Look how beautiful that color is. And then we have Sagittarius and Leo. I'm a Sagittarius, so when I saw the orange, I was a little bit like, why orange? I don't I mean, I've never met a nail polish color I don't love, so I'm open, but see the color? It's like an orangey, like a mustardy orange. That's Sagittarius. And then we have Virgo and Aquarius. If you take them out of the box, the color is a little bit, look how beautiful that is. This is Aquarius. Stunner. So I was thinking we could do one of these for my hands. I've been feeling that like moody fall inspiration, but I think I might try this one. We can do this one on our hands. The Granite State. It's pretty, huh? It's like a bluish, like a slate, like an elephant color. There's also this one. How pretty is that? It's like a dusty blue. Really pretty. I think I wanna do that one for my hands. And then on my toes, I usually just do white because it makes the tan. It's gonna prolong the tan since the sun is uh, bidding its adieu in the next couple of weeks here. So I'm going to jump off camera, I'll do my toes and, oh wait, I just saw something. Clearly distracted. Look at who sent me PR. Be jealous, yep, Lumify. You guys, I order Lumify on like auto ship from Amazon. I know you guys told me that Costco has a two pack, but I always forget to get it when I'm at Costco. But I think they saw an empties video of mine or something and they're like, can we send you PR? And I was like, can you send me auto ship? No. <laughs> The amount of drops that I get from them. I use it every day. I, I use it every day because I'm a creep that sleeps with my eyes a little bit open, a little cracked open. It's like the only thing that works. But they also sent me some of their other stuff. I didn't know they had these other things. A eye makeup remover and a lash and brow serum. This might be a good option because I use Revitalash and it's about $150 a year for Revitalash which if you break it down per month, it's really not that much, but they market it like a six month supply. No, you, like nobody's eyes are that big, Susan, relax, you know? But they got these other little products that they sent, excited about the drops. And then a little bag, it was like a drop. It's like a little coin purse with the clip. These are the things that make me wish I had like a little girl because they love to put this stuff on their backpacks, you know? And then a mirror. So excited. Oh, there's one more product. Brightening eye cream. Look at that for your panda eyes. All right, toes, breakfast. I can't forget my AG1 sitting there. This is this is the kind of stuff I pull. Like I do something and then I just walk away and never think about it again. Um, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I do my nails. I'll just give you an example with like one, like this is what you how you shape it and then you paint it. Anyway, I'll see you later. Are you guys ready to paint our nails together? Okay, this clipper is essential. It is going to cut your nail straight across. Some people call this a toenail clipper. I just call it my awesome manicure clipper. It's from Tweezerman. You can get it at Target or Ulta, and you just cut straight across. You see how that nail is kind of hanging off? 
for dear life, just leave it alone. You're just gonna cut once. So don't go across several times. You're just gonna snip one time. Even if you miss a corner, it's no big deal. You can always fix that when you file your nails. So there we go, just straight across. They're gonna be super sharp right now. So then you'll take your nail file and you go around the corners or the sharpest part of your nails. Just kind of shape the corners. You soften both of the edges and then you just file straight across to make sure that it's even or level. If you don't know what that looks like, you can turn your hand around and then kind of look at the back of your hand and you should be able to see if they're the same length. Okay, with step number three, you need a gentle buffer. Nothing super sharp, nothing very gritty, something as smooth as you can find. This is from Olive and June. It works pretty great. I found it at my local Target. And what you're gonna do first is you go under the corners of your nails. It's really important that you do the corners first and then you do the length of your nail because what you're trying to do is lift up any of that gunk that you kind of trapped under there when you were filing with the regular nail file. And then when you push it out, then you buff the top, anything that's remaining on your nail will come off. And so it won't interfere with the shape or with the polish application. Then you're gonna take that same buffer or your favorite buffer, in my case, mine is from like the 1920s. You're going to buff like the first fourth or third of your nail, not the entire nail, only the edge. So you kind of rough up the surface with a gentle nail buffer. This step is paramount for the success of your manicure. You're going to take 100% acetone on a cotton pad, take the smooth side of the cotton pad and clean the surface of your nails. That's gonna remove any oils, nail residue, filth, junk, Cheeto dust that you have on your nails and ensure that everything else just layers on and sticks on really great. After you clean your nails, you're gonna go in, what is this, step 18? and take the Ella and Mila all about that base. This is a base coat that is going to hold on to your nail polish stronger than if your kid is trying to cross the street without holding your hand. You know what I'm saying? Like when they just kind of bolt and dart for it and you just grip on to the little hand, almost rip off their fingers. Yeah, this is how well this base coat works. I like to do what I call the sandwich method. I don't know if I heard that somewhere, if I made it up. It sounds like something I would completely make up, but I do the entire nail and then with what's remaining on the tip of the brush, I like to do the edges of the nail. It gets a little sloppy. Sometimes it gets under your nail. It's really no big deal because it's clear. So the next time you wash your hands or you take a shower, all of that stuff will come right off. It's super easy. And plus, I mean, it's clear. You can't really see it. So nobody's going to know, you know, nobody's going to know. Okay, step number 22, this is where we go in with our nail polish. If you guys watch the way that I'm holding the tip of the bottle or the applicator, I put my pointer finger on the top of the applicator and that helps me hold the brush steady. Anybody have shaky hands? I do. I have shaky hands because I'm always like going a thousand miles per hour with a million things to do. So it's really hard for me to do anything that requires calmness. So hold the applicator with your pointer finger for steadiness. And then you're going to go in with a big glop of paint, like the biggest glob of nail polish. I don't know why I called it paint. And you're gonna apply that to the center of your nail and then work its way to the edges. If there are any bakers out there, consider this your like crumb layer for your frosting. So this is going to be messy. It's not going to be smooth. It's gonna be a little streaky. This is kind of just ensuring that grip to the base coat. So I go in with a large dollop 
of, I, now I'm hungry. I go in with a large dollop of nail polish, start at the center, and then work my way to one edge, work my way to the other edge, and then always do the tips or the edges of your nails. And if you hold the applicator the way I'm telling you guys, I promise you're gonna be, oh, I should have done this a long time ago. I think oftentimes we scare or shy away from doing our own nails because we're like, oh, it gets so messy. I get nail polish everywhere. I get it all in my cuticles. If you hold the applicator securely, it's gonna be easy, breezy, not cover girl in this case, it'll be glisten and glow, but you see like zero smudging. Okay, so there we have one layer. And you see, you could kind of see through my nail. There's a couple areas that are still a little streaky. And then you're gonna go in with the second coat. The second coat is your pretty frosting. So this is where you wanna do a good job and make sure that everything is smooth and even. So you might go a little bit slower. You might feel comfortable using a little bit less polish so that it's not such a thick layer. I kind of do the same but I wipe off anything that's excess off the applicator back into the bottle. <laughs> Cross-contamination, anybody? No? <laughs> anyway, so you just kind of do a couple of strokes. And on this one, since you already went edge to edge, if you don't go all the way to the edge, again, nobody's gonna know because you already have that base layer that you applied after the base coat. So you can do a little bit more of a smaller application of polish or dollop and smooth out the surface and then always get the edges. Imperative, always get the edges. So if you've done steps one through 67 right, your nails should look like this. Now we can go in with what makes the biggest difference in the entire universe, the Glisten and Glow top coat. Y'all, this top coat makes any manicure, any nail polish look like gel. You get this beautiful high shine finish that lasts weeks and it makes your nails dry fast. So not only is it a quick drying top coat, it is a high shine top coat. So it is gonna give you all the beauty that you need in a manicure. You could take the cheapest dollar store nail polish to the most expensive luxury brand nail polish. It's gonna make any nail polish look like gel and it will make your manicure last for a very long time. Now. Oftentimes I hear, well, I'd rather go to the salon or I'd rather get gel because it makes my nails last longer or makes them look prettier longer. I think one of the key components in making your manicure last, aside from doing the super uh, professional copy written franchised uh, <laughs> privately owned sandwich method, is using dish gloves when you're doing the dishes, using lotion or cuticle oil, it ensures that your nail polish lasts longer and you know retains that high shine factor that you see here. I mean, this top coat, you guys, you saw how many bottles I have of it at home. <laughs> it is for good reason. I will say this though, if you guys do your nails very slow like I do, the top coat does dry out a little bit. So you gotta work fast when you're using the top coat or you just gotta keep refilling your bottle. But look at the ultimate goal here is just the perfect, sexiest, most beautiful, amazing, incredible manicure of the universe. Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed that little fast forward action. So painting my nails usually takes me about 20 minutes. 
I like to take my time. It helps me relax. It's pretty easy. I only shape my nails like every two or three times. So I'll get a little bit of length and then I chop them back and then I get a little bit of length and then I chop them back. So I don't always do the nail clippers and the nail file. I always buff. I have eggshell nails, which means your nails kind of peel in layers. And so I'm, I have to use a very gentle buffer and I only do like the top fourth of my nail or maybe the top third. And this is uh, what you end up with. So you see the shape is a very classic shape. It's straight, but the corners are soft. So it's not going to like scratch or poke, especially if you have little ones that you pick up. And look how stunning the color is. Very, 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 very beautiful. Super pretty. It's like a bluish, like a bluish slate. So there you have it. So if you really want a manicure to last that won't chip, but is also going to have that high shine finish that looks like gel and last, at least two weeks. That's like the foolproof method. There you go. What I was trying to tell you guys earlier today as I was painting my nails and I remembered, what I was trying to tell you is I was gonna experiment and I was gonna make myself a cup of coffee to see if that would make my heart feel like it was jumping out of my chest because usually with the medication that I was prescribed in the past, I couldn't have caffeine anything. Everything had to be decaffeinated. If that, otherwise, it was just absolutely unbearable, but I think I'm chickening out. I don't, I don't think I want to experiment today. Not today, maybe tomorrow or Sunday. <laughs> today is not the day. Today is the day of this beautiful manicure. Anyway, I got to get started with my morning. I got to do some front office work. I got to answer some comments. Got to take a shower and get ready. Parker is actually going to the homecoming game with his daughters today. So we won't be seeing each other until late tonight. So it's just gonna be us. It's gonna be us, it's gonna be work, it's gonna be picking up the boys, sending them off to dads, having some fun with my friend Debbie, and then uh, seeing my husband until late tonight. It's a little, little wifey parole action. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later, bye. Look at how much cuteness we've been working on. Do you guys recognize this baby? I bet you do. She requested a black base. These were so hard to find, but we got a few. So if you guys wanted to order a pop socket with a black base, I have a couple here now. Look how cute she is. I think this is for her husband. So like, you know, mommy and baby. No glitter, no hearts, nothing. And then this is her doggy. <laughs> Look at Mr. Louie. She asked if I could put a thin blue line clay charm, which I don't have, but I was able to put a graphic over his collar in the photo. So it's like subtle enough where it could be like a boy pop socket. I hate to say boy or girl, but you know what I mean. So for her husband, a little thin blue line heart, the handsome puppers and his name. And then we have a ton of badge reels. This one was really fun to make. It's a lot of bows. Do you see the bows on the sides? Bows and hearts for Myra. And then I couldn't resist and I added three little charms at the bottom. <laughs> then we had a request for a moody keychain. No glitter, a lot of black, dark blues. So I actually took some dried flowers, like real dried flowers, and I put them inside the keychain. And then we got a couple charms here. She wanted a blue or black rose, so I did sort of like a blackened blue rose on the back. And just a lot of like little details, but nothing glittery or sparkly, you know? Like moody, but classy. Then we have this request. This one was a request so that it would be very similar to the one we did last week, which was, uh, I think it was Pachaco and Rose Gold but we did Karomi with like a lavender and black. And then I put her initial at the bottom. You're not ready for this one. Look at this handsome fella. Oh my goodness. I put a bow on top, but he's actually wearing like a tuxedo bow on his shirt. Do you see his white collar? <laughs> this is Lennox. His mom wanted a neutral sparkly badge reel. So I think we're neutral enough, like black, gold. I put some like pale gold and silver in the sparkles and then some black. And then I did a little, little paw print action. 
Then we have a tag for Mocha. Mama said, hey, can you do Hello Kitty? And Hello Kitty is kind of tricky unless we do a 3D charm or like these are called flat backs. It's like an acrylic or resin charm that's flat on the back. So we can actually resin it to the tag. And then I put a little heart right there. A lot of you guys ask about contact information. And then we have a really big order for our friend Tiff. She wanted two Halloween badge reels. So we got one here. These are like same but different. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So they're jagged, like the edges are jagged. They're not sharp, but they have like the little flat back charms on top, a little black cat. Got some charms at the bottom. A lot of pumpkins inside the resin with like the glitter. And then a blue badge reel, just blue everything. Blue, 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 lots of blue, but variety, but blue with a little blue bow. And so obviously I took the blue down to the charm as well. And then this is for one of her friends named Tran that is obsessed with pigs. So, I mean, you know what I mean? You, you just have to tell me, hey, frogs, or hey, um, donkeys, or whatever. <laughs> We figure it out or we come up with alternative options. So we got a pink heart badge reel with a little piggy. Isn't it cute? I love the uh, edges. It's like quilted or crimped. Honestly, it reminds me of an empanada, but <laughs> maybe I'm hungry.